good afternoon or early evening. Today is Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. It is 62 degrees here in downtown Cleveland. A little cooler than it's been the past several days where temperatures felt like they were reaching around, what, 90 degrees. We're starting off our downtown Cleveland live walk at Cleveland State University, as I so often do. I'm going to try to just roam around downtown Cleveland for today's stream. I do have one particular place I want to check out because I saw it on social media yesterday and I had never seen it in existence. Right. Don't see the, oh there's the fire truck. I was gonna say, I heard the sirens but I didn't see it. still have it on my radar to do a tour of the outside and inside of Cleveland State University soon hopefully. One slight downside, not, not too much of an inconvenience is that much like other places, uh, CSU re reinstituted their mask mandate for indoors just like Cuyahoga County in reinstituted theirs. So that'll make it a little tougher to speak if I do a video inside, but we'll manage. For now I get to enjoy the cool air outside, slight breeze blowing but it feels great. So this is East 21st Street. Stephanie Tubbs Jones Transit Center is down that way. That's where the Cleveland State bus, meaning the 55 or other buses, go and lay over. Just across from the Woolstein Center. I think we're going to get the walk sign after the turn lane ends here. Traffic patterns are always a little quirky in certain areas of downtown Cleveland, but you get used to them. teaser, the thing that I saw on social media yesterday that I want to check out today is some series of sculptures related to music, kind of near where the free stamp sign would be at Willard Park, but it's at one of those nearby buildings up against their courtyard. Someone posted pictures on social media saying, hey, you know, has anyone ever seen this before? You know, as soon as I saw it, I was like, what the heck? I've, you know, I've been by that building, but I never had any clue that they existed. It's nice that the sun is out. The forecast was showing that it was just going to be cloudy only. I, th I think it was a little bit cloudy most of the day. Yesterday we had a bit of a downpour in the evening that cooled things off. And funny enough, when I was leaving work yesterday, right around 4.15, p.m. I had my umbrella out and it was raining, pretty steady rain, but the sun was out just like it is right now. I snapped a picture and posted it to Twitter, even though you can't see the rain too much in the picture. 
it's always unique when that happens. I tried to look up to see if I could find a rainbow in the sky because oftentimes when you have a mixture of sun and rain it leads to a rainbow but it was still a bit cloudy so I couldn't find one. But that would have been kind of fitting because you know it was the start of June. I'm going to try to make my way toward East 12th Street and then walk all the way down East 12th to get to the first destination that I want to look at. It's actually a little hotter than I th thought it was going to be at this time of day. I have a light jacket on. But the wind seems to have tapered off. dining places we have here, a Lebanese grill just outside the Keith building. There's Connor Palace, Corbo's Bakery. Corbo's sandwich in between the State Theater and Connor Palace. public. Where's all the people at? I don't even know if they're open. No one's sitting outside. Cleveland Playhouse. Let's see what's going on now. Three Musketeers from April 30th to May 22nd. That's over. So was Richard III. need to update the sign in so we know what's playing, right? Hmm. Interesting. I never knew they had a... Excuse me for a second. <coughs> Birth of Rock and Roll. Alan Freed, broadcast from the studios of WJW Radio, located on this site, and Leo Mintz, owner of a Cleveland record store, are credited with popularizing the phrase rock and roll. So maybe that this must be where the radio studio was back then for Alan Freed.
So interesting, you have little places here for both Kent State University and Cleveland State. Kent State says Urban Design Collaborative, College of Architecture and Environmental Design. And then CSU, this is their art gallery, like the galleries at CSU. I don't know, as much as I've been on the CSU campus, I haven't been to these off-campus sites, so I don't know if they just have the galleries there or if they hold classrooms there as well. Maybe this, I think I looked at this last time, maybe this shows upcoming shows, although October is not the, not too close for now. October 7th is the next one listed for Les Miserables. Looks like we have a, maybe a tour bus of some kind with a white trolley over there. Of course, the red lolly, the trolley, recently retired. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a tour or just a group traveling. It says A1 Mr. Limo. Okay, so we will cross here, but then I'm going to walk down the street. I haven't tested the reception down this street, this little strip before, so hopefully it doesn't fail me. I'm walking fast just in case it does, plus there's also not much to see in between Euclid and Chester. Once I get to Chester in East 12th at this upcoming intersection, that'll be where Perk Plaza is, where I previously did a live stream showcasing Walnut Wednesdays. Hopefully we made it past the dead zone. The connection was getting weaker in between the middle of that strip between Euclid and Chester. But now it's gotten stronger again. So yeah, that's where they hold the Walnut Wednesdays. They actually would have had one yesterday. I thought about walking down but during my lunch break, but work got the best of me. The way they redid this Perk Plaza reminds me of how, uh, I don't know what they call it, but on the corner of West 25th and Lorraine, that particular square or park, which is a bit smaller, was redone many years ago and it also looks very nice. But the just the furniture and the 
way it's laid out. It almost makes me think that the same person designed both of them. Across the street is Reserve Square. You've got a florist shop, Alpha Graphics, a subway, the lobby area, Susie's Soup and Deli, DGX Cleveland, and Omar Grill. I thought there was a grocery store somewhere in there as well, but I don't see the label for it. Oh, this is, this is new right here. They actually have parking spaces here. Now this may have been like this for a while, but when I used to take the bus, like the 55 bus to go to Cleveland State, well sometimes what would happen is I would take the 22 bus, get off at East 12th and Superior, run over here because there would be a stop for the 55 bus here. Oh, connection's weak here. There was a stop for the 55 bus where I just pointed to, but it was tucked in, like away from the street, so oftentimes the 55 would just blow right by and not even uh, stop there. We're crossing Superior now. Forgive me for rushing in certain spots, just when the connection goes out like that or tells me that there's a weak transmission signal. I kind of just bail on that spot and try to move on. But one thing I liked about this strip of East 12th, many years ago they redid it and put some nice benches. The sidewalks were completely redone. And this at one point became like the new hub for RTA buses. But now, you know, RTA has restructured so many things over the years that not a lot of buses even come down as far as East 12th anymore. Now a lot of them only go as far as East 6th Street. Here we're at Rockwell and East 12th. Some red chairs. And these chairs have been here a while, so many, many years. And they're still in solid shape. Uh, it may seem silly, but little things like that I feel like enhance East 12th Street because when I would sometimes ride my bike, I would purposely ride like all the way down maybe St. Clair and not turn until I reached East 12th because I knew it was like a pleasant, uh, pleasant ride to go through. Now some of this is a little bit busted up, like I think uh, that used to be all connected to form like a, I don't know, what do you want to call it? A bed for the grass or flowers or whatever is growing there, but it seems to be chipped away at in several spots. This one's a little more intact still. I don't think it was completely, like I think it was purposely like down, up, down, up, but some of them are missing particularly on that one over there. Like I don't think it was a complete rectangle. And then you had some wider benches over here. So in previous live streams I've talked about certain areas of downtown Cleveland having underrated spots where maybe you could go eat your lunch. I would say this is one of them. If you worked in one of the nearby buildings, you could camp out in one of these benches and just enjoy your lunch. What is this sculpture here?
Anyone have any guesses before I read what the sign says? I don't think that's for a business. Let's see what it says. Anthony Mager, untitled. <laughs> so what the heck? They're saying they don't even know what it is? It says untitled, 1950 to 1960, donated to downtown Cleveland by the Frank and Nancy Porter Fund of Cleveland Foundation. So what is it? I don't know. I'll have to maybe try to look that up sometime, figure out the background of it. So now we're approaching Erie View Galleria. Again, I can all also relate to when I was young, like in elementary or middle school. The Galleria was a bit more active, or a lot more active, I guess. It was never super active, but it at least had businesses in it. Now it's just a shell, class A, move-in ready office space. But what I was gonna say was back then, this was just a huge empty parking lot. In fact, when we used to go to a few Cleveland Indians games back then, I think we would just park all the way over here because it was kind of like an abandoned lot. I don't think anyone was even charging for it. We would just park there. But now it's got, I assume, apartment buildings. Okay, so let's see here. Initially, my plan was to go through, but it says road closed. I can probably cut down one of these. walkways sidewalk closed ahead cross here so that would take me if I took the path there to East 9th Street there is a Bethel court a little alleyway there although it says one way do not enter yeah I think they do have a detour where you can get around to Lakeside. Rad Air. I didn't know there was a complete car care tire center here. I also didn't know that the benches and East 12th foliage extended to this part as well. Now we're at Lakeside. Let's see here, in the distance there I can see Channel 3, Triple Doppler Tower. 
That is the Public Utilities Building, Carl B. Stokes. Hmm. Uh, there's a few sculptures over there. I wasn't going to go that way originally, but maybe I should cross and see what what those sculptures say. I have to wait for the light now. Though. While we're waiting, I'll try to pan around. That's where we just came from. Walk down that way because they're doing this construction here. Let's see, what is that construction? It says shoreline consolidation sewer will prevent up to 200 million gallons of Lake Erie pollution every year when complete in 2024. So, 55 and a half million dollar contract to work on con sewer consolidation. Light is changing, so we should be getting the crosswalk. There we go. All right, so let's see what these are. In this place, Joseph Cardinal Mindsensi consecrated the torch of freedom for the captive native nations on May 26, 1974. So Joseph Mindsensi, 1892 to 1975, Archbishop of, or I can't really read it, Esterkam. Prince Primate of Hungary and Cardinal Priest. And then over here, October 23rd, 1956, freedom is not free in honor of the many Hungarian freedom fighters who fought against Soviet oppression. Yeah, so I never knew this existed over here too. I'm tempted, I want to walk down there, but I don't know how the reception will be. The thing that I want to show uh, is about a block or so down. But I'm going to give this a shot and walk this way. I do see a water fountain at the end. If I notice the connection getting weak, I'll abort and turn around. This is actually a really cool walkway here. Very picturesque. All right. Yeah, the signal got weak there, so I'll turn back around. In case I cut out, as soon as I started walking a little bit closer toward the fountain, the signal gave me a weak transmission. Those are the type of things that I'd be more free to explore if I was doing a pre-recorded video. Speaking of which though, I just looked at my, I brought my DJI Pocket because I wanted to take some pictures while I was doing today's live stream because that's often the issue. Is that once I'm live streaming I can't take pictures for social media. And then when I went to use it actually a few minutes ago, <laughs> I was like, oh shoot, I forgot to put my SD card back in the, the Pocket 2 device because the last time I used it was to film 
the Cleveland Dinosaur House. It was like a three and a half minute video that I did back on, what day was it? I don't know if it was Memorial, I don't think it was Memorial Day. No, it was, uh, I think, the Saturday before Memorial Day. Or Sunday, I can't remember which. But I believe I left my SD card in the computer slot and forgot to put it back. And that brings us to this building over here. at North Point. So many times, not a ton of times, but many times when I've, say, ridden a bike downtown and eventually I'm making my way either to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame area or First Energy Stadium, I'll go to East 9th right up here and turn down. And I pass by this building, but I've never seen this art exhibit or sculpture exhibit that exists over here. This is the thing that someone pointed out on social media yesterday. Unfortunately, the signal is very strong over here, so we get to take our time showcasing this. And the cool thing about it, as the person on social media mentioned yesterday, is not only are the sculptures here, but they have the peaceful music playing as well. Let me try to get out of the sun glare. Funny, there's a bird inside the piano. Try to get a little bit closer to see the inside of that. I don't think there is a description, you know, usually when there's sculptures around, somewhere there's a little plaque that describes what you're looking at. But I don't think there's one around here. Or if it, there is, it's kind of tucked away and hidden in a spot. That's why I'm sort of walking around the way I am. But interesting, they got a bike rack there with heavily used bikes. That's nice to see that people are using bikes. But yeah, all the years in downtown Cleveland, when I saw those pictures on social media yesterday, I was like, no way that this this is in downtown Cleveland. I've never seen it before. It was hard to find the Sorry, I was hearing the audio. Oh, so Sirius XM Pops is the music that they're that they're playing associated with this. 
Well, that'll probably get me a copy, copyright strike. That's fine. But anyway, I couldn't find many descriptions about this sculpture, like the background of it. But I did find some hint that there was an article published in 1990, November 1990. So we're going to say that that's roughly the origin date of this series of sculptures. It said, and I'm going to read from the article, the outdoor sculpture titled Symphonic Suite depicts the late Arthur Fielder, I assume that's the conductor, conducting a small orchestra. It was crafted by Michael Cunningham of Cincinnati. Arthur Fielder was an American conductor known for his association with both the Boston Symphony and Boston Pops orchestras. With a combination of music, musicianship, and showmanship, he made the Boston Pops one of the best known orchestras in, in the United States. And then I guess beyond that, uh, for this... I'm not sure which part was the new structure, whether it was this or this. Something in here was like newly constructed as an add-on to this whole area. But a blurb said that a goal of the $95 million, 558,000 square foot addition was to include unique features, including a five-story atrium, outdoor patios, outdoor sculptures, and indoor water fountains. So yeah. Do you believe at least 1990 this has been here? And I feel like not many people know about it. Welcome, Sadie Lamp Duo. Thanks for joining. I'm going to check my backpack real quick just to see if I have, by any chance, my SD card with me. I don't think I do. I think it's at, left on my desk at home. see it. Oh well. I have to come back and take pictures another day. But yeah, that was a neat little escape in downtown Cleveland. So if you come downtown consider checking that out. Now, I'm sure everyone who's worked in this building and stuff definitely know about it, but I've never seen it featured before on social media. see what time it is right now. 5.09. I'll probably around where rush hour traffic would be ha happening. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Great Lakes Science Center, First Energy Stadium, and the Lake Erie Pier would be down there. We've done handful of live streams that have gone down that way before.
walking down East 9th Street, headed south. We're kind of back the way we came, it's, except instead of going down 12th, we're backtracking down East 9th Street. That alleyway that I mentioned earlier from East 12th was over here. The Galleria Courtyard. What's the Galleria Courtyard look like? Deserted. This is where, it smells like a skunk over here too. This is where, when I was younger, all the food places would be. I don't think anything's open now. I mean, there's signs in there for great steak and potato, some cuisine pizza, but you can see there's no seating absolutely anywhere. It just looks deserted. So I assume nothing's open in, in that area. We've got nine viewers joining us right now, so welcome everyone. If you haven't uh, followed us on Twitter or Instagram, there's our little Twitter and Instagram handles. And also, if you haven't already, feel free to like this video, and if you're not subscribed, always love having more subscribers to the channel. We recently passed 400 subscribers. So here's one positive, which I always mention, Winking Lizard is open and there's people, even though they're not outside, the inside tables are pretty filled up. I think their reputation of the Winking Lizard still stands for itself. And it's kind of, you know, it's not like, even though it is inside the Galleria, it's probably like the only thing active in the Galleria. In fact, I don't know, is this open? I can take a quick peek in here. Yeah. Oh, I always look for these guitars. I didn't know they had one in here. And this one says, I love Cleveland with the Indians, Browns, and Cavaliers. And it has the little winking lizard even on it. One of these days I'm determined to like find every single guitar in Cleveland and where it's located and make some type of resource for it. And then there's a Statue of Liberty made out in red, white, and blue with the old Chief Wahoo. <laughs> They're still keeping the Chief Wahoo up. I don't mind it, but... I don't want to go too far because I'm sure security is probably in here, but there's a glimpse. I feel like almost everything over there is vacant. I think they advertise that there's a Chick-fil-A stand in here at lunchtime, and I see a Chick-fil-A little desk over there. So at lunchtime, I do think Chick-fil-A is here. All these places seem like they're for lease, although right there it says Finer Things Gift Shop. And this does say open ETN convenience store in the Galleria, so maybe that's further on. There's the Y, YMCA, so that is active. 
just instead of having a bunch of stores, they have the YMCA there. When I was a kid, there used to be at least a bookstore. I think Brentano's bookstore over there. There was an art gallery on the second level and various clothing shops. And what the heck? I think a spider just... <laughs> yeah, a spider was just hanging from my hat right now. But yeah, the upper level, I think, is pretty much empty right now. It was nice to get that little glimpse of the Galleria. It was actually more active than I anticipated. And they are supposedly trying to continue working on you know, making improvements and additions to it. We'll, we'll see. Sadie Lampdiel says, can you do a night bike ride live video in Cleveland? Well, the challenge to that is when I do my bike ride videos, in order to do them safely, I attach this, uh, what do you, I attach this small device to it which does not do live streams and only records uh, videos that I can then upload later. It doesn't connect to the internet. There is uh, a separate chest mount harness that I could buy for a cell phone. And someone that I watch on YouTube called Action Kid has done that before where he puts the cell phone in his chest mount and is live streaming like that. The only downside to that is if I was doing it, I could be you know, riding the whole time and if the internet connection was weak on the cell phone or if it just completely cut out, I would have no idea. I'd be, I'd be riding for like 20 minutes and for all I know I could have wasted all that time because the connection could have died out. The way that Action Kid gets around it, uh, you know, that issue that I just mentioned, is that he puts the cell phone on his chest mount, but then he has a second cell phone that he attaches to his bike, and he's watching. Uh, he's watching his own live stream on his second phone, so that way he can constantly check whether he's still alive, whether the position of the camera is good. I don't quite have that set up or a second cell phone, so if I do do a video riding, uh, it would have to be pre-recorded. And nighttime rides are still a challenge because that device that I showed it records great video in the daytime, but when it comes to nighttime, if it's not well lit, it's a little tough to see. Now doing a ride around dusk when it's still a little bit light out would be ideal. I had thought about doing an Edgewater ride over Memorial Day weekend, but it was, you know, it would have been a great time to show the amount of people out at Edgewater Park, but since the temperatures were getting up to like 91 degrees, I was like, eh, I'll trade off and wait for a cooler weekend. Let's go ahead and make this light here. And then I'll try to read through the comments that I've been getting. Nature Girl, oh, speaking on the bike ride, I guess, saying I would be too worried about being robbed or assaulted at night in a fort an unfortunate reality of living in the city now. Yeah, I understand that. Like, for example, even in the daytime when I was walking on the outside of the Galleria there, you know, I was, <laughs> even though I'm not showing it on the camera, my head is, like, spinning around looking at the bushes and the corners to make sure there's no 
person just like lingering. But yeah, on a bike ride I would feel, if it was on a dedicated trail like Edgewater, I would feel safer on that. And if it's still a little bit earlier in the evening, like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, there's a ton of people that are in Edgewater Park. So it just depends on the time of day, you know, knowing whether it's super isolated out. DWG Adventures Rhonda says, that's why I don't do this in Atlanta any time of the day. Yes, uh, I know you've mentioned before the concerning crime in Atlanta or just being able to feel safe and at ease. Yeah, I wouldn't be doing these live streams if I didn't feel safe. That's one of the reasons too when I've been taking the bus lately down Lorraine Avenue. A lot of times in the past few years I would just sleep while I was on the bus. Well, when I say sleep, I mean rest my eyes, meaning I was not looking out at what was on the Rain Avenue because you know, I've seen it every day for years but lately I've been trying to pay more attention and actually look because I want to see okay what kind of businesses are out what kind of people are out does it is it safer in these areas because if I do do a live stream down the Rain Avenue I want to have that good uh mental projection in my head on which areas are most safe or frequented by people who you know are actually out and about for good reasons as opposed to you know hanging around potentially for not so good reasons so now we are at Euclid and East 9th Street. Pretty pretty good crowd here at this intersection at this time of day as well. The thing I wanted to show over here to the left was that the Euclid sandbox is no longer <laughs> I think it was active, meaning the Euclid Sandbox was these series of bricks. It was like a perfect square. And it was just left there as dirt, like a, and a tripping hazard for many, many months. Then someone who ended up being a CSU, CSU student who had just graduated did a fun little gag or prank and they planted a mini garden. I'm trying to think where exactly it was. Was it this? Yeah, actually I think I passed it up. Okay, this is where it was. I looked online to try to compare. It was in between this panel and this panel. And right here, you can kind of see the indentation where the bricks are new. Well, they did a good job filling it in. It took them forever, but they did a good job, like I said. You can see the level of the bricks is slightly up here. Like this is this is the brick that was fine, and this these are all the new bricks. But yeah, color-wise, it matches good. I did a video a while ago, not complaining, but trying to point out all the concerning uh, pavers that were caving in on Euclid. And there are still some issues here and there, like you see right there, or you know here, it's kind of uneven. So it's not perfect, but that's at least one improvement that they filled in that. There's Heinen's and the Cleveland Trust Company building. I did a pre-recorded video on that last week where I went and tried Mitchell's ice cream and I showed off the beautiful architecture inside the trust building. That video would have been recorded with 
that same device I've been showing a couple of times where it's a pre-recorded video and that way it comes out in high quality and without any streaming interruption since I was filming inside that day. Here a helicopter. Yes, Sadie Lamp Duo Edgewater bike ride video would be cool. The one challenge I've been thinking in my head about whenever I do that vi video is there's kind of two different bike paths one could take. You could go, let's say you're starting from Edgewater Park, you could take the trail to Edgewater and then once you get around the West 65th area, you could either cut inward which is the trail I would take to go to downtown Cleveland. And that's a very nice trail. Or you could make a left and go closer to the lake. And there's a different trail, which I've never been on before. And it takes you to, I think it's Whiskey Island. Is that what it's called? I've never taken that trail before, but I've been looking at pictures of it. So I try to debate in my head, hmm, which one would be better to, to showcase. I mean, I'd like to show both of them at some point but for my first feature Edgewater bike ride video that's gone through my head and also another thing is do I want to start the video at Edgewater and go toward downtown Cleveland or do I want to start for example in downtown Cleveland and go to Edgewater this was the other thing I wanted to show uh, a couple weeks or months ago this was the other area that was completely caved in and all the bricks were taken out and then someone again on social media a few days ago showed that they were filling it in and have put all the bricks back in place so even though they still have the cones up maybe there's some more polishing they're going to do to it but it's nice that hopefully soon this area will be freed up again so people can walk on it and you remove that tripping hazard Looks like they hit, they've put a few of the renderings of what the inside of the city club apartments are gonna look like. Let's see if I can zoom in there. I mentioned before when I did a feature video on Cleveland projects that the inside of this is supposed to be very unique and colorful and have a ton of different themes in it. So that picture kind of, even though it's blurry right now, kind of encapsulates what I'm talking about, I think. I'm going to see if I can cross the street, maybe, or not. I'm going to just hang out here for a second. You see the Lime Scooters. I've been surprised. A few times I've seen Lime Scooters up near uh, Lorraine Avenue in West 105th area. All right, let's see if we can make sense of any progress here. Yeah, they've got the, sorry, no, it's blurry there. Let me try to get the camera closer. They've got the wooden foundation, some beams going across. So basically they've dug into the ground and are completing that deep foundation. But hopefully soon they can start building upwards and raising the city club apartments.
iHeart Media. Their studios must be here. Yep, says iHeart. They got a lot of conference rooms too. Sadie Lamp Duo says, have you ever done a video going to the 30th floor Terminal Tower restaurant and getting a bite to eat? No, I haven't been up there. I haven't seen the observation deck nor the uh, the restaurant. I didn't know there was a restaurant up there. That's interesting to hear. I've never actually walked, I've always walked past this and shown it, but I've never actually walked down this pathway here. So why not? Like I said, I'm just trying to do a bunch of random exploring here. Sixth City Sailors Club. Smells good. So I wonder if this is the just all one spot or if it's two different two different places. Because there's House of Crail in Cleveland and then that one over there says Six City Sailors Club. Fresh off the boat. So I wonder those may be two different spots, and I didn't realize that. And then down here, I presume, is a underground parking garage. Make no mistake, this city is the heartland. Oh, they've got little, uh, well, I think the dog bags or waste bags are empty right now, but once they restock that, it'd be nice for dog walkers. Fifth Street Arcade. I'm guessing the shops are probably closed right now. Or maybe they're not. Here's the cupcake place. Looks like a coffee or drink place over here. Well, you know, I could fulfill my curiosity. I've always wondered whether a live stream, the connection would be good enough in the 5th Street Arcades. Let's go ahead and try it. Even if the, I don't know if the places are open, but we can walk through. Shop for Mike the Hatter. There's ton, tons of hats. <laughs> I have done a video showing the 5th Street Arcade more in depth before. It's dark on that side, but this side's a bit more lit because of the window illuminating the area. DWG says, are there apartments, etc., in walking distance? Yeah, I think pretty much, pretty much everywhere I've been walking by, there's lots of apartments. Coco's Painted Furniture. This store called Coco's. I've seen features on it before. It, it seems very extravagant. I would like love to do a video showing off the inside of it, but it's one of those things like I don't know if, what they're, how receptive they are to it. But from what I've seen, there are uh, yes, this is the. Let me think here. This is which which one is the Colonial Arcade? This is the one that's uh, between uh, Euclid and. Prospect. 
I don't know, they call them the Fifth Street Arcades now. But anyway, I believe this store goes like down a level. Yeah, see how there's stairs there? So it goes down a level and the store is like a lot bigger than you would think. But there are a ton of cool crafts. I mean, if you are wondering how cool the inside is, just look at this, you know, the outside decorations, the cool tree, the flying, I don't know, is that a monkey? The enchanted forest, you've got the tin man, a little fan blowing with the house. The doors, I mean, look how cool those doors look. And then the shoes and cases above it. The sign saying, Journey into the Chronicles of Coco Narnia. Brass tack shoe repair. Pleasantly surprised, by the way, that the live stream signal is as strong as can be inside of here. DeWitt's Jeweler. They got the mini NFL helmets. There's the Rams versus Bengals for the Super Bowl last year. There's the Browns helmet. Nice that we're featured on the same level as the Kansas City Chiefs. You can see all the celebrities that have come over the years. Even though I'm probably terrible at knowing the celebrities. This is the same place, by the way. Bobby C's Classic Barbershop. I remember talking about this in the past and just the cool little knickknacks that are in the display window. Like those old looking cars, the blow dryers. Texaco, a gas pump. And this is also part of Bobby's parlor. Step back in time, it's trying to portray 1976, I guess. And the little Cleveland Browns Dalmatian dog. Addie's Diner. You come here for breakfast, Monday through Saturday, 6.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. I don't think all these places here in the dining area are occupied, like the middle section, but at least one of them are. But there's also seating areas there. Gems Boutique. Colonial Coin. Vincenzas, they're already closed for the day. I gotta go back there sometime to eat. I did feature them in one of my videos late last year. Or I tried a slice of pizza and lasagna. Well, maybe they are still open. They're still ringing customers. Or maybe they're closing up for the day, I don't know. Now oh, they're heating up a pizza back there and someone's taking a pizza to the desk. Oops, wrong way for the door.
Yeah, they just sat down right there. There's a whole group eating pizza. So yeah, my, my mistake on the hours is that. I'm not gonna go in, but let me try to see if they show their hours. No, I don't see the hours published on the outside, but good to know that they're still open this time of day. In between is the residence in Marriott, so there's a ho hotel there. Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, where the Cavaliers would play. And then, of course, beyond that, on the other side, would be Progressive Field. Next to Barrio is the other side of the 5th Street Arcade. clothing shop over there. DWG says there used to be a gyro place around here somewhere that I would go. I think it was on Euclid, but you're not sure. Here's Johnnyville Woods. I remember when I did this in my pre-recorded video, I took time showing off all the unique baseball bats and can't quite see too much into the store right now because the lights are off, but they have like Christmas lights in there and you can tell it's uh, probably a fun little experience to check that out too. Oh no, <laughs> the heck. <laughs> and this store extends for a while, it goes on to this side too. There's also, on this side, I don't remember this place last time I was here. I wonder if it's new or I just forgot it. Clevo Books. So it's a bookstore here in downtown Cleveland. That's nice to see, and they're open right now. Let's see what their hours say. Monday, Tuesday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So that's nice, a uh, bookstore here in downtown Cleveland. I didn't know there were any remaining bookstores down here. Let's balloon it. I don't remember this place either, but again, I could be forgetting. Looks like a balloon shop. Poke 86 appears to still be open. We Bleed Ohio. Some Cleveland t-shirts. So not GV artwork and not some of those other companies, but their own assortment of Indians or Guardians, Cavaliers and Browns shirts and clothing. Looks like two tops, maybe? Spinning tops? I don't know. I assume they're chairs that you can sit in. 
I remember this place, Cleveland in a box. Build your box of Cleveland. Five items for $35, 10 items for $55. James Humbert says, proof we actually are literate. <laughs> I assume you're referring to the bookstore. <laughs> And the Haymarket Pet Company. You can get dog and cat toys here. Colonels by Chrissy. They have the kernels that you can purchase there. And a little bit of a stained glass feeling display here. And we're back to Euclid. <laughs> I think that's where we initially went in. I did miss out on showing Rocket Fizz. Although I think this is a common company. Maybe locally owned, but something you see uh, in other cities as well. Perfect timing. The crosswalk was ready for me. Still areas to work on where the bricks are uneven or waving. Oh, road closed. Why don't I just cross over here? <laughs> Guess I'm going to have to go back to the other side of the street. And then making matters worse, the Amazon Prime vehicle just <laughs> parked in the crosswalk. DWG says we had a rocket fizz, but it closed though, I assume in Atlanta. And then Nature Girl says that arcade looks more upscale now than I remember it in the 70s and 80s. Now, that arcade over there, the one with the impressive architecture and such, that's the one where, you know, people take a ton of pictures all the time, and it still functions as a nice hotel. I know, but you got them shoes, buddy. <laughs> Where? But, uh, the arcade is still anchored by, like, Pizza 216, Kathy's Ice Cream, and the Chocolate Bar. But as far as the rest of the old arcade, it's pretty empty. Except for the post office inside there. When Mitchell's opened, I was reading articles about it and someone pointed out that K 
Kathy's was the only other ice cream place in downtown Cleveland, which I knew Kathy's was here, but I didn't know that it was the only ice cream place previously. Although maybe there is another spot just tucked away. Let's see here. Can we still get in here? Eh. I always wonder to myself, because since the 5th Street arcades, arcades has a lot of small businesses in it, what's the reason why there aren't as many small businesses in the, this arcade? My only assumption is that I assume that the rent is much crazier. I mean, there are something here, like some type of podcasting company. next level i mean the barber shop is saying it's on the second level but that, that's empty i assume this is empty over there across the way there's like storefronts that have pictures in them but they're more so advertising storefronts there's nothing actually in any of those places and same thing when you look downstairs there's pictures in the storefronts but very few of the places actually have tenants in them. I th that place may have a, a tenant of some kind although that just says insurance group I believe. I think that's what it says. <laughs> There's a luxury spa. And again, nothing against spas at all, but I'm referring to like where are, you know, stores that people can go in and shop. Because you're not going to get a tourist to come to downtown Cleveland, come in here and say, oh, let me go into the spa. You know, they want to see cute little stores to explore like the 5th Street Arcade had. Fortunately, the draw of coming in here is still for people to take pictures. Like you can see, I believe all those people down there are doing, they're all taking pictures of the beautiful interior but as far as I know all these places on these upper levels are hotel rooms and I believe they do pretty well so my guess is if the Hyatt is the one running this that if they're making enough money from uh, all of that maybe it's not so important to have you know, tenants in these downstairs areas. <laughs> DWG said, when, when, I worked, when you worked for Hyatt, we had to warn people for the inner rooms about the noise level. Oh, so I assume you mean inner rooms like those ones? The noise was probably a bit loud. There is a restaurant here on the end. But th those are the places that are doing the most business are the restaurants or food places that have the end cap properties. For anyone, once you get to the inside areas, it's not very well populated. The U.S. Post Office, not open at the moment, but that still is open during the regular business hours. And there's a coffee shop on the first level over here. The sign over there says Campbell's Sweets Factory and with an arrow over there, but Campbell's Sweets is no longer open. Why am I, I always press the wrong side to push open the door. So now we are back over on Superior Avenue. Yeah. 
Oh, see, that's what I was talking about. Campbell's Sweet Factory. That's no longer open. Nature Girl said that's a shame that they can't acquire more retail tenants in such a beautiful arcade. But the rent per square foot is probably astronomical. Probably. In fact, uh, I think I mentioned this in one of my videos. At East 18th and Euclid. Uh, I know, why am I forgetting the name of the place? It's like Bony Barbecue Fingers. They had moved there during the pandemic to, to the Cleveland State area, and they said they used to be in the arcade that I just came out of. And I'm, I know they said they're making better business where they're at now, but I assume that the rent probably was, I'm just guessing, probably more expensive down here. Yeah, I believe it. It's, places aren't going to come back until rent gets under control. Usually this light, when I press the button, it kind of triggers it to change. It's pretty long for to have to wait for it. Maybe I should just walk down to the East 6th and Superior, right? It's not changing, but there's no no traffic coming. So always safety first, yes. Here's the Eastman Reading Library, or Reading Garden, which last time I did a live stream a few weeks ago, it was not open yet, but it has since opened. I did a short on YouTube showing the inside, but I didn't actually get to come in here during a live stream. Got the cute little guys reading their books, recycling and trash, solar powered recycling and trash compactors. Interesting, solar powered. I think if you're taking the tunnel to go from one library building to the next, uh, this is like a see through. So if I think if you're taking that inner link between the buildings, it would uh you could technically see upward. Plenty of nice seating here. What's on the ground here? Word. There's like an arrow. A maze. Follow. 
just kind of random letters. Yes, have a great evening, DWG. Thanks for tuning in. have some quotes here like a child falls asleep the bed is red and uh, I can't read it aquamarine aquamarine can't see because there's like gum stuck in them the whims are blessed by oceans the carpet by the bed is I can't read it because it's in a circle and then a few other quotes Oh, the story of reading, but someone knocked the D off of reading. Verses run rhymes around reverse. have some benches over here doesn't look like I'm not gonna touch it but it looks like it's all dusty so it doesn't look like they brush this off or clean this maybe as often as I would like this would be the inside of one of the libraries just the lobby area like where you would uh, check out books over there or pick up holds sorry I know it's blurry and then I think this is the basement level where they have right now a bunch of flags hanging up. But back there is, I think, either a computer lab or a place where you can use like tech, unique technological equipment. Robert says, do you think CPL would let you take a video tour inside? I'm not sure. That might be something that I, I try emailing them about. I thought about emailing some places and just like straight out asking like hey I do a nice walking channel you know would I be able to do a walking tour see what they say because it would you know be more comforting if I had permission otherwise I wouldn't do a live video and uh, I don't know how well the reception would be once you're actually deep inside the building that lower level there again I know it's hard to see but that lower level behind there when I was a kid that would be my favorite place to go because they would have all of the DVDs. The DVDs would be on that side of the room. And then over here, they would have all of the computer software that you could check out. Which I know sounds silly, but they had tons and tons and tons of computer software. A couple of games, so sometimes it would be fun to like rent out the game and install it on the computer. Now, when I say in computer, I'm talking about like Windows 98. And there may have been some educational programs that were downloaded. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was always fun to look through all the software every single time just to see if you could, I could find uh, a piece of software that was a little more different or unique that we hadn't seen before. And then of course the vast assortment of DVDs now uh, they probably, you know, computers have modernized so much they don't, like, I don't think they really have uh, that much computer software that you can check out at the library. And the DVDs are now located in this building, I believe on the first level, but all the way on that side. There's the dreary... Drury, I don't know how to pronounce it, Plaza Hotel. That used to be the headquarters for the Cleveland Municipal School District, I believe. In fact, I tried, or I applied for a position once, so I believe I interviewed in that building. When I interviewed for the, or went in the building, this was close to a decade ago, probably. Uh, the building looked really out of date. <laughs> so I'm sure the hotel has spruced it up a bit. 
but it wasn't long after that interview that Cleveland schools got out of here and moved to the corner of East 12th and Superior. Actually, uh, yeah, I didn't mention it, but when I, if you saw the beginning of this live stream, when I walked past East 12th and Superior, the building on the left side would have been, uh, would have been the Cleveland School District new headquarters, or new compared to this this location. I had, for all the times I've been walking by here, I had no clue there was an Abraham Lincoln's uh, monument here. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Yes, today is, June 2nd is my birthday, so that was my fun thing to do today, was to walk around, just relax, and do a nice live stream on this beautiful weather day. Nature Girl says, I had no idea that CMSD had moved. Yeah, I think they moved like, I want to say, seven or eight years ago. I don't know if they moved the entire headquarters there, or just a portion of it. I usually don't get to walk toward the monument here from this direction. I'm usually coming from the other way. I know we're a few days past Memorial Day, but I always like to come by here and check out Cleveland War Memorial Fountain, iron memory of those who gave their lives for their country. And in addition to that, they have the names of the soldiers including well, let's see if I get this the right spot of it now H there we go Calvin F. Hess I'm pretty sure that, if I'm getting the correctly, that was my mom's uncle. Fortunately, I'm forgetting the bomber group that he was a part of. But I know their plane went down while he was serving and they were in battle. It's always a nice dedication. The 700th Bomb Squadron.
Oh, look at that. From this angle, you can see the rainbow. There you go. See, I was looking, talking about wanting to see a rainbow the other day. With the sunlight and the water reflecting perfectly. You guys can see the rainbow, right? Let me try to zoom this out. I think you can still see the rainbow and the full statue now. You can see there's a lot of dogs, people with their dogs over there on the, the mall. Perfect, no cars are coming. I think what I'm going to do is walk up here and show a little bit of the activity with the dog the dogs playing in the park and then I'll probably end the live stream and it'll be good timing because I'll actually be able to walk back to where that symphony sculptures were from earlier in the live stream and then since I'll have ended the live stream I can go ahead and take some pictures with my cell phone and use that for social media. If you come here at the right time of day when the sun is still in the sky, the Hilton provides perfect shade for, you can see, you know, up there the sun is still there, but perfect shade for a lot of the grass areas here so imagine it's a hotter day like 80 to 90 degrees but you still want to relax but not be burned by the sun you time it up right you can use the shield from the hilton to offer some shady relief robert says what's under the mall parking or convention space uh, under here is a convention center space Park, I think parking is over there under that. So yeah, parking is under that one where that memorial was, but under this one is the convention convention center. Oh, uh, look, looks like some of the dogs are dispersing now, but let me still try to show them. See, all, all those were playing together up there before. Oh, look at the frisbee throwing. <laughs> I think the dogs were attacking each other, trying to catch the frisbees. Which one's gonna get it?
for some context, when I was showing the symphony stuff earlier, the sculptures, it was at that building right there. So after I'm done with this stream, I'll walk back down there. Or maybe I'll keep the stream going until I get to the free stamp. Oh, something is being set up over here. A bunch of tents with First Energy Stadium in the background. Lake Erie. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I wonder if that's being set up in anticipation for the Pride Parade, which I believe is happening this Saturday, June 4th. That'll be my educated guess right now, but I have no idea. I'm just trying to guess. Again, if you haven't followed us on Twitter or Instagram, feel free to follow us at Poco Traveler on each one of those. I post all my videos to YouTube, but on Twitter and Instagram I post uh, pictures either from the walk or just from other spots that aren't in the videos. And I also on Twitter try to offer some commentary about other neat things I see. Look at the cute little dog. <laughs> and again if you haven't already feel free to hit that like button or subscribe if you haven't subscribed already I'm trying to ambitiously get up to 1,000 subscribers I'm shy of halfway there about I think 407 subscribers the last time I checked And if you subscribe, all it, it's you know completely free. There's it's nothing paying. All it all it means is when you log into YouTube next time, you'll have a better chance of being informed when I post a new new video or when I go live. You'll get an alert. If someone was asking what's below that grass right there, the Huntington Convention Center of Cleveland. So this is underneath that grass that we were just looking at. Now there's a historical marker here. The Burnham Mall group plan of 1903. Well, it says continued from other side, so this is where it started, August 1903. And it talks about the architects who planned the malls. And when I say mall, I don't mean like a shopping mall. They call this a mall, that thing. And then the two things we were just on, those are all malls, like Mall A, B, and C. When the Cavaliers had their championship parade, Back in 2016, uh, you know, the parade happened on the streets of downtown Cleveland, but when they actually finished the parade, like the final point was at one of those malls, and that's where the stage was, and then they had the rest of the ceremony. There's the Cleveland Public Auditorium. That's where I was only in that building once, I think, and that was for, well, maybe I was in there more than once. But the, the time I remember being in there was for uh, my high school graduation. And this is 
Cleveland City Hall. I think there used to be a small library in the back left corner of City Hall. I don't know if it's still there. Like part of Cleveland Public Library, but I believe they specialized in city or urban related books. I don't even know if that branch is listed online or if it's still there. I know my brother, when he had a college course for one of his urban studies courses, that was an, an elective for one of his class projects, we went in there to try to find a few books related to some background history on Cleveland neighborhoods. And then last but not least for today's live stream, the free stamp. I really do need to look up the history and actually remember it. But I know this was supposed, I feel like this was supposed to originally be near Public Square, maybe where the BP building is. And there was some type of thing where they're like, no, we're not having that here. I could be wrong on the story. But then eventually it ended up here. I've never noticed that they actually had a little uh, monument thing describing here, free stamp, uh, painted steel and aluminum, 1991, gift of BP America. So that would make sense of what I was talking about because that would have been at the old BP building to the city of Cleveland, Michael White and J. Westbrook City Council President. So I, so I guess they're saying this was only uh, here since 1991, which makes sense. I mean, I was born a tad before that, but I feel like it's been here my whole life, which pretty much it has been, I guess, what, 31 years it's been here. All right, thanks for tuning in everyone. Again, if you like this video, feel free to hit that like, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I think this is the first time I actually showed myself during the live stream. But yeah, thanks again for everyone. It was great seeing like 14 to 15 people actively watching the live stream, hanging out for roughly two hours here. So thanks again and we will see you next time, everyone.